Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas for Information on Demand, IBM's premier conference. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. And our next guest is Jake Porway, founder and executive director of Datakind. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. So you're a celebrity up there on stage, you know, oh, showing God. the greatness of big data, the <laughs> social good, but you know, you're a geek at heart like us. You know, a Absolutely. couple of years ago we were nobodies, now you're famous. Well, you're data scientists. We were nobodies. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nah, we, we love having data scientists. Uh, we had Hillary Mason on last week. Oh, she's good. fantastic. Yeah, she she really, great. she, if anyone's yeah. a celebrity, it's her. I she is, yeah, she's a rock star. struggle to live up to. She is so Dave good. and I always yeah. get perked up when she's on theCUBE because she's so awesome, she's such a geek, she's so articulate. Absolutely. Now she's a VC, so she influences money. Yeah, <laughs> she's got everything. She's so great. let's get into it. So here, just give the folks a quick update on here, what you were doing on stage and some of the things that you were talking about here at IBM. Absolutely, so I was uh, mostly talking about new ways that we can use big data for the greater good. So there's all these great applications you're seeing of businesses figuring out how to help you watch movies better or find a bar that you want to go to. But the coolest thing to me about the big and big data is that it's expansive. It, it no longer just touches Wall Street and Silicon Valley and the places you traditionally see data, you're seeing it now where everyone's having their data moment, whether it's journalism or nonprofits uh, and the environment. And so there's all these great new opportunities to use new data sources to solve really big problems. And so I spoke a little bit about how our nonprofit Datakind has been using data science to tackle some of the biggest issues in the world um, through these sort of collaborations. So talk about the, the um, social media, social movement. It's, it's a dynamic, you got crowdfunding, you got Absolutely. all the stuff going on with, with people connected to the web, you're seeing new kinds of just patterns emerging from you know, folksonomies developing with tagging with say hashtags, yeah. people dialing and we love that, to just getting involved. And so like harnessing that loose, federated personnel asset not yeah. everyone has their own IT department, right? So, <laughs> right, it's so tough. Never mind yeah. big data, data scientists. So just kind of give the folks an, a, a view of what it's like, obviously a tsunami of potential people to work on something important. And everyone has that fleeting moment of, I feel good, I want to donate, or yeah. I'll give you a few weeks of my time, or you know, we've seen Kaggle and other, other environments use, mm -hmm. I can you know, count the stars with, with open source kind sure, of things. So, so give us a taste, how do you harness it? How, what approaches did you take? Take to, uh, how do I artist Harness the approach? crowd in a way that? Exactly. that makes it frictionless to get involved, but sticky to stay in. Absolutely, well one of the things that's really nice about it is that the community is already doing a lot of this themselves. I mean, you see people taking part in Kaggle competitions or going to hackathons, and really what we were missing there was that connection to the real world problems. Because if you just leave an excited data scientist on his own to solve a problem, then it's gonna solve his own problem, which is usually parking your car or finding a bar to drink at. And so really the, the trick that we worked on was uh, actually less about data and more about translation, about finding a way for data scientists to speak the language of the people who were trying to solve the big problems. So let's say you sit down with the clean water NGO, they don't know what big data is. I mean, it's scary to people in the business world, much less people outside of that sector. So we've been working very hard to be that middle piece that says, hey, this is what data can do for you. It's, it's not so scary. We're going to show you, we're going to take you through those first steps. And those data scientists, similarly, we can say to them, hey, you know, it's not just about using the coolest new technology. It doesn't matter if you get to use D3 to visualize something. What you really want to be doing is thinking about how you're using this data to solve a big problem. And this is how you guys fit together. I've always said that the best data scientist is one that's invisible to the end user. Because at, at, at the end of the day, your examples highlights that they, they kind of want to get to point B. Exactly. Clean water. They don't want to know the, the maps and the nuances. So how do you right. enable that? I mean, what, what do you do? Do you have to sit down and have meetings with them? Is it visualization? Well, you know, uh, it's funny. I, I thought the biggest thing we'd be doing was data related. That we're going to bring all this data science in. But, but frankly, the biggest aspect is actually the framing of the problem, really finding the question. You know, as any good data scientist will tell you, it's not so much about the data as it is the question you start with. So we spend a lot of time bringing data scientists to sit down with organizations to really understand what they need. So we had one group that was a healthcare network, and they said, we've got all this data. Let's build a visualization. That sounds really exciting, and you might just jump in and do that. But we had data scientists sit down with them first and say, well, why? What are you going to do with that visualization? You know, everyone wants a dashboard, but dashboards are useless unless you do something with them, unless they drive some act behavior. So after they got to talking, you know, the organization started to say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I guess what we really want is just knowing, you know, having like an alert, like an email saying that something's changing in our programs, uh, that this many people are now sick. So frankly, maybe we don't need the dashboard at all. So that's a lot of the process is actually just getting to the real question before you even bring the data in. 
And that's been, to me, that's actually part of the, actually one of the most exciting parts of the process. <laughs> so Jake, another data scientist that we had on was Jeff Hammerbacher, right? He's oh, very famous for having said, you know, best minds of my generation are trying to figure out how to get people to click on ads. That was actually the inspiration for data kind of. We're sitting here. I was going to say, he would love what you're doing, right? And does love what you're doing, I'm sure. But so are you as negative on that whole clicking of the ads thing, or do you think there's some good that can come out of that? Well, it's a very necessary uh, tool to have. I mean, you know, business is a very important aspect. I, I don't like people who go one side or the other, right? Who vilify business, or we'll often have people come to us to work at data kind and say, you know, I do evil during the day. So <laughs> <laughs> you're good now. And I think that's not. It's the right not way selling to out. Oh, I sold out. I hate that yeah, term. No, it's like I, this is people need to make money. Absolutely, and every, there's a great place for that. And big data has a huge role in that. So I, I wouldn't say that it's evil. It's just it's it, we'd be selling ourselves short if that's all we focused on. I mean, I, I, to me, it's like I've always this is going to sound I'm typical Silicon Valley. I've only lived in Silicon Valley for 13 years, um, but this sounds very Silicon Valley like. They're not thinking big enough, <laughs> right? Go. I mean, if you think about it, the problem with big data is the creativity is really the the power, yeah, right? Absolutely. Unleashing the creativity. So, so is, do, you, do you agree with that? And, and and what would you say to folks out there saying, hey, how do you get someone to think big in a way they they can't ask these questions? They never had a chance to ask these questions before. Yeah, it's so how do you get them to open up and think big? Yeah, it's it, that's such a good question, and, and actually. It's one of the things you'll hear a lot about when people describe a data scientist, right? They have to be creative. They've got to think outside the box. I mean, it's really hard to do that, I think, especially because right now, big data is still treated as a mystery. A lot of people black box what they're doing. You know, yeah. they'll say, Especially oh, consultants. What's that? Especially, especially consultants. Especially consultants. Well, they make money, uh, clicking uh, ads. respect to our consultant <laughs> friends. But yeah, exactly. The you know, evil uh, consultants. Uh, 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 right. You, know, you hear things like, right, people will go, I, I can't, can't tell you the secret sauce. Algorithm. It's right. an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they'll come out it's and a, say, no, it's you know, a model. It's, right, right, it's a model. Right, but that they'll be happy to say, oh, well, we unleashed the insights and released the power. But what does that mean practically? And, and that, to me, is what helps people think bigger is to show them practical examples, to say, here was a problem we had. Here was how we tackled it. And you know what? The other part of the story, before we get to the gold at the end of the, the rainbow, is that we failed four or five times. We tried three models that didn't work. And then we tried this, and you know what? The data wasn't there. I think the more you hear those case studies and those stories, the more that you get people to think outside of the, the box, outside of the black box, and say, ah, now when I see a problem, I can think of four or five other ways I've heard of this being tackled before. Now I can sort of think bigger and more creatively about that. What do you think of social data as the potential to drive, you know, predictions? You know, we talk about prediction oh. markets all the time. We we had Nate Silver on a, a oh, couple absolutely. of shows ago. <laughs> Great dude. What's your um, what's your take on the potential of social data to to oh, predict man. things? I mean, it's it, it's almost immeasurable, right? It's it's data about us. It is the digital representation of almost everything we do, everywhere I check in or everything I say. So. The potential for prediction is, is huge, and we've seen this in so many examples. Like, as you said, Nate Silver has, I don't know if he actually looked but at no, this. But no, no, he's that, using um, traditional sort of polling data, right? So it's still fuzzy, the social data. Fair enough. Um, I was going to say, actually, there's a group, Crimson Hexagon, who uh, looks at social data and Twitter data to do predictions of big events, and they have... Like they iPhone have announcements, <laughs> <laughs> things like that? <laughs> yeah, things like That's that. That's probably very predictable, but... Sure, okay, sure. Okay, Crimson Hexa Hexagon. Yeah, it's had a great guy, Gary King, out of Harvard started that, and... Um, They've been looking at uh, prediction markets for um, po politics, so elections. They've been incredibely accurate in elections predictions. Um, and, th and then you're seeing, you know, I used an example in my uh, keynote today about people who are tracking so, uh, social media for mentions of flu symptoms and flu conditions, similar to what Google Flu Trends did. And there you can see when people talk about the flu, they often have the flu, and that's a great leading predictor of where flu outbreaks are happening. You know, so, so I, so I so remember Nate was kind of negative on that. You weren't there, you were watching. No, but I remember I kind of tweeted yeah. out. What was, what was his negativity so about it? Nate basically said that, the, you know, he thinks it may be promised down the road, but there's just not enough there based on his investigation. Hmm. His so tool, far, no, he was talking right? about the tooling. The tooling, the tooling available for the, what, he, what we're, I'm calling the general purpose data scientist. Sure. Okay, not... The, right now, you, I think we're pioneering, you guys are in particular. There's, there's, a, there's a general purpose, and he considers himself a general purpose data scientist. Okay. Give me the data that's available that I can touch, and I'll synthesize God, it. I love that we haven't even defined data scientists yet. Now they're subclasses. No, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's old school. No, no, I mean, he's old no, school no, no, data no, no, scientist, right? No, but he's, but he's like, you know, okay, he's <laughs> yeah, tinkering, right. he's playing, he's a data jockey, or a Jim Rad, as sure, Hammer sure. Baca said, he's a data, data nerd like yeah. us, right? So he's like, he's in there with the data, but he's not coding, exploring data sources, you sure. know what I'm saying? So he's saying, uh, was he saying there's not enough tools available for, say, an analyst that needs to... Yeah, yeah, to tool, off-the-shelf 
tooling to make things quicker. Tooling. I mean, he's also that? talking about the maturity of the data set. I mean, again, he is old school data scientist. He's using polling data from multiple polls and sure. you know, aggregating them, analyzing them, building a model. And, yeah, we. You know. It's so funny. It just we goes to, to show how much headroom there's left in the business. Yeah. A lot of room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember we used to call them statisticians. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think that's a great point. There are a lot of, uh, you know, more, there's probably a lot of maturity left. You know, and in fairness, and I don't think Nate that. necessarily refers to himself as a data scientist. I think he would probably consider himself more of a statistician. I, I, I there's sure. actually, there's a great post by Cosma Shalizi, who's a statistician out of uh, Carnegie Mellon. And frankly, it's about data scientists versus statistics. Not that this is necessarily what anyone cares about, but I'm just going to say, I'm thinking of going back to statistician myself. So it's really, a, it was a, a chance, statistics lost an opportunity, basically to say, hey, there is a profession for taking large amounts of data and drawing conclusions from them in a principled way so that you don't introduce bias and so you can take care of missing data. And uh, they missed that opportunity to get on the boat. Now you see all these people who are suddenly given data, dropped into their laps, and everyone's talking about big data and how to deal with it, but no one's talking about the fact that these people need to know statistics. Like, that has been there for exactly yeah. that purpose, and uh, we're still just sort of talking I was about on a how to I was uh, moderating a panel with uh, the GE, had a big customer thing, Jeff Amelt was there uh, on, on the panel, all these luminaries from the executive companies, talking about big data, impact of their organization. The keynote speaker was Florian Zettelmeyer, director mm. of Center of Data Analytics at Thanks. Kellogg. So, yeah. And so he's giving his talk, and one of his epic sound bites was, he said, he says, I, I talk to customers all the time, and they ask me, what should I do for data scientists? And he goes, he goes, do you hire a CFO, this is the CEO, do you hire a CFO that says, I don't know finance, but I have someone on my team that does. <laughs> his point was that analytics has to be ingrained mm. in the career you're in. That's like hiring a CFO that doesn't know finance, yeah, but has someone on his point. team that does it. So his point was is that if, you want to be successful on the, on the data front for your organization, that that should be a discipline. Um, oh, what's I your take on that? I think absolutely. If it's, is the, the question is just that data science and analytics should be a discipline? Uh, or if oh, no, you, you work with folks. No, how do you get folks that, because yeah, I mean, you're working with people who are like, here to solve a business outcome, aren't in the weeds on technology, so you're exposed to, I'd say, you know, the first generation of, what is that animal again? What's it look like? It's, oh, it's data. You yeah, know, sure. Using data to, to be successful. Over time, that's going to change where it's more in, uh, ingratiated to the organizations. How, how do you talk to people that are maybe not as scared of data? Or what, what, what's your advice to folks out there that's like, here's how you, you get into it? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Well, uh, thankfully, there are tons of ways to get involved in this now, whether it's Coursera courses on data science or new universities that have data science programs kicking up. Um, but, you know, one of the a practical piece of advice I'd get before getting into the larger idea of curriculum is just go out there and start meeting the community. You know, come to things like this. I, I see, you know, meetups around the New York City that are like the data science meetup where people actually come and just talk about statistics and uh, what Data Gotham was a big event. Data yeah. Gotham is a huge event and an awesome event. I really love that one. For those who aren't familiar, it's a data science convening in New York that highlights all the really cool things going on by practitioners of data science, like kind of for us, by us. It's yeah. not under the <laughs> banner of a company. It's almost like a conclave. Yeah, yeah. Con yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm not sure what a conclave is, but I agree. Yeah, no, it <laughs> sounds <laughs> religious. So, yeah. Uh, That's what happens when the Pope <laughs> dies. <Yeah. laughs> White smoke comes out. Okay, we authorize yeah. that standard. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I do. So, yeah, right. Yeah, you don't want white smoke coming out of your shit. That's, that's no good. But, uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's it. Just get out there and get, uh, get familiar with it. Know what you don't know first. What's your take on the IBM experience here so far? What's your take of the IBM oh my personnel? Obviously, Watson's been a big marketing home run for them as well as great technology. And yeah. now it's turning into kind of a productizing for us, the group. But totally. What's, I your, mean, what's your take on the IBMers here? IBM's been, well, so far, just here has been a huge, amazing experience. I mean, first off, the conference is gigantic. So mm -hmm. the number of topics that it can span is just mind-boggling, right? They have all these tracks and everything from cloud computing to social media data. It's super impressive. Um, but I've always been sort of an IBM fanboy from the early days because some of the research and development that they do is so groundbreaking. You know, they're not just a vendor, right? They're all, they're they're not mailing it in on the R&D side. <laughs> yeah, not at all, right? They've got, I mean, the fact that Watson came out of this, <laughs> that's amazing. Watson's going to be like, you know, picking the next president, something like that. Um, so that's amazing. And then, of course, near and dear to my heart, they've got Smarter Planet, right? So that's using big data for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. It's very in line with the things that yeah. I believe in. So, it's so where great. are we with the social good uh, market right now? A lot of people can get connected. Where do you see it evolving into? Full-on community like open source? Is it going to be... Hmm. Much more like uh, its own little society. I, no, I, mean, I, I hope so. I hope we get past this point of seeing a division between social good and industry. I mean, I, I mentioned in my talk today that 
uh, the, everything sort of went through its computing moment in the 90s, and now every discipline is kind of going through its data moment, which is a, a great quote that my pal Mark Hansen says all the time. And uh, it's, it's true. Like, I don't want there to be this division in the future of social good versus not. It's just everyone is going to reach this greater level of data literacy. And I think that's what we're going to see, is that just like everyone has a computer in their business, everyone's going to have some data capabilities. And I would love to see that community talking about it more. Like I said, more case studies. What are we learning? How are we failing? How do we do this better as a community? Okay, we just got in. He, you confirmed for 5.30. Okay, well, okay. we have the guests coming in. We got the crowd check Judith going on. Judith Hurwitz coming on. It's, yeah, we're going to get the Ray cube. we to move faster Murph. here. Um, so There's thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it, oh, uh, Jake. Pleasure. Great. We're a big fan of your work. Congratulations. Thank Great you. Great to see you up on stage. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, social great goodness that you're doing. It's just I believe that we're going to see stuff that we've never seen before, mind-blowing. I think so too. And if you want to follow Humanity. along, yeah, if you want to follow along with that mind-blowing stuff, you can always go to datakind.org, uh, yeah. follow along with our newsletter, or get involved. Join us there. Well, we feel the passion. You know, we have open source content. We we built CrowdChat for that purpose. Perfect. Free product to collaborate groups. This is the Cube. Keep watching, expecting to see them from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest live from Las Vegas at IBM IOD right after this short break.